Getting ready to open up? This weekend. Uh, that'd be real nice having a store right there. Well, good luck. Thanks. Heidi, Lou, what brings you to town? Heath Barkley sent me in from the mine. Wants me to tell you they'll be coming in tomorrow night with a load of gold for the San Francisco Mint. Oh, the San Francisco train don't leave till 9 o'clock. I ain't sitting around watching it. <laughs> They'll have their own guards. Oh. When? Tomorrow night, about supper time. How much, amigo? 50,000. I sure don't mind getting my fingers dirty for that kind of money. That is, if it doesn't go through the floor of the baggage car. <laughs> what do you got in that trunk, rocks? It feels like it sometimes. No, uh... I'm a book salesman. These are my samples. Oh. <laughs> Seems to me if I was going to go on the road, I'd get me a line of feathered pillows. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wish I had. Step over to the desk and I'll make out your receipt. like the canary I had when I was a child. I remember. You called it Bo Peep. Well, she named him Sassafras. Sassafras was my cat. That's right. It was Sassafras. I remember he was one with a pleased expression on his face when Bo Peep disappeared. Only because you left him out of the cage. Mm-hmm. Elaine? Victoria? <laughs> Elaine Baxter! Oh! Oh! Elaine! Well, Oh, it's been so long. How have you been? Just fine, fine. Oh, Elaine, I want you to meet my daughter, Audra. Audra? My Hello. son, Nick. Howdy. Elaine and I have been friends, good friends, for many years. Now, what on earth are you doing in Stockton? Well, well this is our store. We're opening it. <gasps> oh, I never wrote you. Oh, well, I got married three years ago in Denver. I'm Mrs. Bert Jason now. Oh. <laughs> oh, come inside. I want you to meet Bert. Come on. I think you better make that a gross. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Jason. Bert, can you break away? Excuse me. Yes, sir. Oh, Victoria, it's so good to see you. Bert, this is Victoria Barkley, one of my oldest and dearest friends. How do you do, Bert? It's a surreal pleasure. Elaine has spoken of you often. And this is her daughter, Audra, and um, do do? her son... Nick. Nick, yes, I'm sorry. Glad to meet you, Nick. Same here. Why didn't you let me know you were coming here? Well, I was going to, but uh, well, we had to get set up and get the store open. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Jason, I'll have these things for you first of the week, uh, if you care to pay for them now. Well, here, I'll just sign and you can send me a statement. Oh, uh, well, you see, my company has a regulation about that. What kind of a regulation? Gentlemen, this uh, sounds like business, and I have some other things I have to attend to, so uh, if you'll excuse me. Certainly. Mother, Audra, I'll meet you at the delivery stable in about a half hour, all right? You see, Mr. Jason, it's not that we don't want new business, no, sir. What not... is the problem? Oh, well, ma'am, it's just you don't seem to have your credit established over at the bank as yet, and... Well, that'll take just a few weeks. We have to open first, start making money. Oh, I understand, Mr. Jason, but, uh, you see, well, uh, with the company, that's something else again. They feel if you don't have your credit established right off, why... Well, what you're saying is that we're a bad risk. Oh, no, no, not at all. Oh, no, sir, but, uh... Uh, well, you just get set up and, and you let me know, and uh, I'll be glad to take an order. Well, uh, good day. How are we supposed to get the merchandise we need without credit? Oh, Bert, there are other companies. We'll make it. Of course you will. Stockton is a growing town, and we can use you here. Thank you, Victoria. Audra, we must be going. Now, we're going to be your very first customers, only if you will have dinner with us as soon as you can. We promise. Don't we? Bye. Oh, excuse me. Ladies. Good afternoon. I'm terribly sorry we're not open yet for business. Yes, I know. I gathered that from the sign outside in the window, but I was hoping you'd sort of make an exception in my case. No, I'm sorry. We're not open until the weekend. Oh, that's too bad. You see, I need these things for tonight. Tonight? 
Yes, I can't wait for the weekend. Well, let me see your list. Um, see your shovels, pickaxes, shoring boards, uh, buckets, kerosene. Oh, Bert, uh, we have all of this in the basement. We can take care of this gentleman. I'd be very much obliged. Will you want all this stuff now? No, no, no. Uh, you can take your time, gather them together. I'll come back around supper time and pick them up. That's all right. Well, that'll be fine. We'll, uh, we'll have it ready then. That's most kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bert, Jason, I'm going to have to give you lessons in salesmanship. This is quite a big order, whether we're open for business or not. Well, aren't you pleased? Sure, I'm pleased. Well, let's get these things out. It'll be supper time soon. Come on. <laughs> Who's winning? I am. Ha! You mean you were. I understand you were in Stockton today. How come you didn't stop in and say hello? Oh, Audrey and I had so many errands to do, I, I don't know where the time went to. Well, Nick tells me you ran into an old friend. Yes, I didn't. It was quite a surprise. She was Elaine Baxter. Of course, her name now is Elaine Jason. Anyhow, she and her husband are opening a general store here in Stockton. Oh? Well, the town could use another general store. We certainly could. Bandy's is always running out of things. I think they'll do very well, with a little help getting started. Why don't we give them a party and introduce them to all our friends? Well, I'm sure they would appreciate that, but they need much more than customers right now. What? Credit. Well, haven't they talked to the bank? Mm-hmm, so did I. But it seems the Jasons have run into a lot of bad luck. The, uh, the store in Denver burned down, and the one they opened in Albuquerque, they had to close that one, too. They were weathered in for two months. The bank agreed that it wasn't their fault, but they still couldn't help them. Mm. Well, banks are supposed to be cautious institutions, you know. It seems to me that what your friends need is someone substantial to guarantee their credit. Well, as a matter of fact, I was going to bring up that matter at dinner tonight. Uh-huh. Well, now, do you think they're a good risk? Yes, I do. Well, I don't. Bert Jason. That uh, name rang a bell with me this afternoon when I first heard it, so I'm checking into it. Well, what did you find out? Here it is, all here. Bert Jason, six years ago, Oklahoma Territory. Armed robbery. No conviction. Five years ago, he shot down a man in Dodge City in self-defense. At the same time, he was running around with an outlaw by the name of Frank Colder. Well, Nick, what does that prove? <laughs> what does it prove? Jared, self-defense, no conviction. Now, you're the lawyer. Tell us what it means. Well, very simply, it means he's as free a man as anybody else. But don't you think it's kind of strange that your friend would marry a man like that? Well, maybe she didn't know about him, or, or maybe he's changed. Oh, Nick, if you were there today, you saw him. What did he look like to you, a killer, an outlaw? Mother, you can't judge a man by the way he looks. My father, your grandfather, and Elaine's father were prospectors together. When my father was killed in the mine collapse, Elaine's family took me in. They didn't have to, but they did. They saw to my upbringing, my schooling, everything. Now, I want to help them. I'll take full responsibility. Well, now, I don't think that'll be necessary. After all, we still are a family, aren't we? I think if Heath were here, he would agree, too. I think we're all in agreement. Thank you. By the way, Nick, a writer came down with a message from Heath. He'll be in tomorrow night with that shipment of gold, $50,000 worth. Well, that means we're going to be on guard duty at the depot. All night. <laughs> You. We have everything ready for you. Bert, do you have a bill? Uh, no. I thought it was here somewhere. J. 
Just keep your mouth shut and don't you make any noise. Don't try nothing. What? What is this, Bert? I don't know. Just do as he says, Elaine. That's good advice, Mrs. Jason. I suggest you take it. Relax now, folks. We're going to be visiting with you for a while. What is it you want? We, we're not open yet. We, we have no money. Well, we don't want your money, Mrs. Jason. Well, what then? Merchandise? Take it. We don't want your merchandise either. Although we may want to use some of it. And everything we need seems to be right here. There's a bedroom and kitchen in the back. Well, that's good. Mrs. Jason, I think we might all enjoy some coffee. Do you have any? Yes, we have coffee. That's fine. Would you make us some, please? We'll do anything you ask. Just don't harm my wife. I assure you, no one's going to be harmed. Providing no one tries to harm us. The coffee, please. Dave! You don't like the cage, no? Help me take these things downstairs. When we leave, I'm gonna set you free also, amiguito. Water, cut it out. Leave that bird alone. Uh, this one I take with us. She can keep us company and sing for us while we work. Pajarito, look at the light. It'll make you happy. <laughs> this will be the wall facing the baggage depot, would it not? That's right. Give me the Maddox. Sam, we'll have to shore up as we go. You have the lumber? Over there. Porter, go get the lumber. Well, let's get started. What are you waiting for? How much gold will there be? 50,000, I understand. Much more than we expected. And in Mexico, it'll command an even higher figure. Come on, go get the lumber. Don't worry, amiguito. When we leave, I'll set you free. I gotta hand it to you, lady. This here's good. What time is it? I don't know. I ain't got a watch. Late, I reckon. What are they doing down there? Digging. Digging? Yeah, digging. You know, in the dirt. For what? 
what? Well, that's a good question. I asked myself that question lots of times. Back when I lived on my pappy's ranch. Work the dirt, boy. That's what he used to say. Work the dirt. It'll pay. <laughs> but all I ever got was raw hands and a busting back. I don't know, though. This here is different. My turn comes down there. <laughs> I reckon my pappy was right. This here is gonna pay. Bert, what's happening? Dave, go on downstairs and help border. We're gonna rest a bit. Right. Lady sure makes good coffee. They're using our cellar to tunnel across to the baggage depot. There's a shipment of gold coming in tomorrow night, and we're going to take it. I, I don't understand. Obviously, you're, you're an educated man. How could you do such a thing to decent people? Well, it's very simple. Until a few years ago, I was a school teacher entrusted with the future welfare of my students. And while I was highly esteemed or pitied, I found it very difficult to live on 30 cents a day. That's what your decent people paid me. And so one day, I said I simply have had enough. Does that answer your question, Mrs. Jason? If it does, I suggest you go to the bedroom there and get some sleep. Tomorrow is another day. You'll go about your business as usual. I don't want people to come in here and see you in, shall we say, an overwrought condition. Do as he says, Elaine. And remember, there will always be a gun pointed at one of you. Is that clear? Yes, quite clear. I'll be all right. You go ahead. You know, when I lived on a school teacher's pay, I used to use parched corn for coffee grounds. They say they grow coffee in some parts of Mexico. Perhaps when we get down there, we might even buy a plantation. Yeah. No, I mean it. Why not? How do you think tycoons and land barons got their start? You know anything about growing coffee? No, but... What is it? Are you nervous? No, I'm all right. Well, it's understandable if you were. You've been out of action for a long time. Look, I only asked if you knew anything about growing coffee. One thing I learned. Never listen to what a man says as much as how he says it. It's her, isn't it? That's what's bothering you. You don't like the idea of leaving her behind. No. It is, Bert. I know. Now, listen. She's not your type. Oh, for She's me. not. I know. You like them wild and young. You, they got to make you feel like they're, they're, they're fish jumping in your veins. You're going to be a rich man, Bert. And a happy one, I guarantee it. Barkley, Audra. Hello, Hello. Bert. Well, what can I do for you? Where's Elaine? Well, uh, she's uh, gone out. Oh, well, I really wanted to talk to you. Mr. Jason, are those new dresses? Uh, yes, they just came in from San Francisco. Really? Excuse me, Mother, uh -huh. I think I'll look at them. <laughs> well, you are finally getting straightened up. Quite a job, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. <clears throat> what, uh... What is it you wanted to talk to me about? Bert, I know who you are. Or rather, who you were and what you were. Hmm. 
so. Does Elaine know? Well, I told Elaine I'd had some trouble once, that's all. I saw no reason to say more. I see. What's past is past. It's over and done with. Unless uh, someone wanted to revive it. I'm devoted to Elaine. You know that. I only want to help. Help? Well, I won't go into sentimental reasons, but I've instructed the bank to issue you credit until you can get on your feet. Oh, Mrs. Barkley, I don't want your help. Well, I don't understand. Why? Well, I just don't want it, that's all. What about Elaine? Well, what about her? Well, don't you think she should be considered? Mrs. Barkley, the store here, our coming to Stockton was her idea, not mine. We've had stores, two before this. Now, this one isn't going to be any different. You work from sun up till sunset, waiting on people hand and foot. Yes, Mr. So-and-so. No, Mrs. So-and-so, we're all out of that. Now, if I hadn't considered Elaine, I wouldn't be here now. Well, I'm at a loss. I don't know whether you're turning me down because you dislike me or you have too much pride or... You hate what you're doing so much you don't want to succeed. And it would be a pity if it were that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Barkley. I... I didn't really mean to say all those things. I don't know. Maybe I'm tired. I don't know. But believe me, please. I am trying. And I am grateful for what you're trying to do. I, I don't know how to thank you. No thanks are necessary. Elaine knows that. I'll tell her when she comes in. Audra? Oh, Mother, I've got two dresses I've just got to try on. I might have known. All right, you go home with Jared. I'll drop by his office and tell him to expect you. I'll see you at dinner. Bert, you and Elaine come for dinner soon. Of course. As soon as we can. Bye. Goodbye. Do you have a dressing room? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, they're not ready yet. Oh, I don't mind. Just anything will do. What's in here? It's just a downright shame you had to see that, girlie. Take your hands off me. This is Jason. Sit down. You heard him. Sit down. Audra, I'm sorry. Who is she? I'm Audra Barkley. Barkley of the Barkley Sierra Gold Mine? Yes. The ironies of life. She means trouble, Frank. Nothing we can't handle. You think not? Her people will be looking for her. Well, let them. They won't find her. Will they, Mrs. Jason? Oh, no. No, they... they won't find her. Easy now. You do just like we told you. Uh, just a minute. Like Dave said, do like we told you. Jason, I'm Jared Barkley. How do you do? How do you do? I came to pick up my sister Audra. Is she here? Well, no. She left shortly after Victoria. Oh? Well, that's strange. She was supposed to ride home with me. Did she leave any message where she might be? 
No, she didn't say anything. I... Perhaps she got a ride with someone. Yes, yeah, I suppose that's what she did. Well, sorry to bother you. Thank you. Good night. Mr. Barkley? Yes? Oh, nothing. It was very nice meeting you, too. Good night. That was fine, Mrs. Jason. Now back in the kitchen. Mr. Barkley, waiting up for that gold shipment? Yep. Sam, did you ever have a younger sister? Hey, <laughs> no. Don't. We're through. It's the wood floor. Get the tools. Está bueno. Get out of here. I'm hungry. Mother? Yes? Dinner ready? Well, it's been ready for quite some time. Silas is just waiting for Jared and Audra. No, as late as it is, they probably decided to stay and wait for Heath, and I gotta eat and get out there myself. Well, it's a mighty big dinner for just two people. Good. I'm hungry as a bear, and I can't think of more enjoyable company to eat with. Oh. Thank you, kind sir. Buenísimo, Mrs. Jason. You cook very well. I'll take the watch with Dave. All right. You're unhappy, senorita. Don't you care for Mr. Calder's hospitality? Oh, Audra, please. Please try and eat something. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. What did he call you? I beg your pardon? Colder. Frank Colder, that's your name, isn't it? Frank Colder. It has to be. Audra, what is it? Don't you see? He's in with him. What are you talking about? Why would you think that, Miss Barkley? My brother Nick checked up on you. Where was it? Oklahoma City, Kansas? An outlaw by the name of Frank Calder, him, and you worked for him. Oh, Audrey, you don't know what you're saying. Don't I? You're not denying it. A simple name slipped, Bert, and she picked up on it. Shut up, Frank. Is that proof enough? Deny it, Bert. Please deny it. It's true. Well, why shouldn't it be? 
With our luck, one failure after another, I'm tired of it. Well, then that also means you're tired of me if you could do such a thing. Elaine, it's too late. Way too late. Oh, Bert, listen to me. No, no, it's never too late for anyone. Elaine, you have the store. You'll make out. Uh, you'll get over this. And believe me, you'll be much better off. Bert! Uh... All this time, all our plans stopped it. When you start, will you... You planned this all along. Well, go ahead, go on, and kill, steal, do anything you want. If, 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 that's, if that's what you want to do, and someday I'll, somehow I'll just, I, I'll, I'll make it up. Very touching. Possibly the best reason I never got married. The gold train just turned into the street. Hey! Get your hands out of here. Come here. Stop. Frank, what's happening? The ladies are making too much noise. Take them down the cellar where it's nice and quiet. Stop. Keep watch up front. Get it unloaded and the drinks are on me. How was the trip? No problem. You made pretty good time. Well, we left the mine a little earlier than we figured. How'd it go? Fine. Well, nice and quiet around here, isn't it? Yeah. Say, by the way, you had anything to eat? No, I guess I'm later. And now, there's plenty of food over the house. We waited on ordering you, you know. Oh, well, I had dinner over the... Audra? Yeah, by the way, where is she? Well, I haven't seen her. I thought she was home with you. My uh, mother told me that... She didn't come home. Well, I told you, I haven't seen her. Well, it looks like we've lost a sister. <laughs> Take it easy, girly. I ain't gonna hurt you. And pretty soon, it's gonna be all over. You guys get some dinner. I checked over at the Jason store. She wasn't there. I figured she must have found a way home. Did you look anywhere else? No. I didn't realize until now. Well, let's get started. Heath, why don't you check the hotel? Jared, you check the cafe. I'll check the livery or any other place you think she might be. Locked in the depot. Good. Go on back upstairs and keep watch. You two get going. The bird the bird is dead. So what? Go on. To breathe. Yeah. It sure is stuffy in here.
apologize for your discomfort. By morning, you'll be found and released, I'm sure. be getting too old for this kind of excitement. It's a good thing I'll be able to retire after tonight. I've waited a long time for this. There's not enough air in here, that's what's the matter. We've got to get them out of here. What are you talking about? Well, look at that bird. Look at all of you. There's gas in here from someplace. You must have hit it in that tunnel. What? Leave them. Are you out of your mind? I said leave them. They'll die. We take them out of here and we're dead. He's right. Let's get out of here. Come on. Frank. You wanted gold. You've got to get your fingers dirty. Not this dirty. Not murder. Not my wife. Your wife. If you were going to leave her anyway. Come on. Frank, let go. She's nothing to you. I think maybe she is. I've made nothing but mistakes all my life. She's the only thing I've done right. Then stay with her. Tie him up quick. And meet us upstairs. But Frank... I said tie him up. Nobody's seen her. Did you check the Gordons? Yeah, Elsie says she hasn't seen her since last weekend. 
Where the devil could she be? You know, here we are beating our brains out, looking all around here for her. And if I know our little sister, she's probably home right now, getting ready for bed. Now, if that were true, next somebody would have sent us word by now. She's got to be around here somewhere. Well, let's go find Heath, see if he's had any better luck. She better have a good excuse. You know, Frank, the thought of a rope. Don't think about it. Now we go out the back door. Easy, like. Like nothing's happened. Now come on! Come on. Our train will be here in an hour. Let's wait across the street. Check the store again. Maybe Mrs. Jason forgot to tell me something. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to check back to the ranch. She just might be there. All right, we'll keep looking here. Trunk, Dave, come with me. Okay, take it easy. I'll be out of here in a minute. There's gas in here. They left us here to die for it. Come on. 
Hello. I've uh, had a change in plans. I'd like my trunk. So I'll check through to my shed. Yes, I know, but I want my trunk. It's right back there. Got your stub? Stub? What stub? Baggage stub. Well, you know me. You, you know my trunk. It's full of books, remember? Still need a stub for my records. Stub, yes. Well, I'm sure it's here someplace. I've got a stub some... Yeah, here it is. Hmm. All right. Come in. Put out, Bert. We open in less than an hour. You can't do everything. Well, I am here, you know. Yes, I know. And I will be always. So stop trying to do everything yourself. Oh, Bert, I'm so nervous. No, that that's not the right word. I'm I'm excited. I am too. I never thought I'd hear myself say that and mean it. <laughs> Hello! Here's to your opening. May it be successful and overflowing. Oh, champagne. Right from our vineyards, and believe me, I know it's the best. Oh, please stay and share it with us. Bert, get some glasses. Yeah. No, no, no. You're much too busy. We'll come back later. Uh, tonight, tonight. When Mr. Close. Jason, do you have a dressing room now? Well, yes, I just finished it last night. Oh, good. Now I can find those dresses I like so much. <laughs> Audra, they're not even opened yet. <laughs> Sheer beauty. Never knew fancy scratchings to make a gun shoot any better. Fancy scratches? That's etchings, my boy. No other gun done quite like her. Now, a gun's a gun. It's all in the man behind it. Is that a fact? I'll have you know that I won every target shoot to Sacramento Fair for the past six years. Well, now, that makes it all kind of too bad. What does? Because I'm afraid your winning streak's gonna have a break in it this year. Now, is that a fact? There's one consolation. Uh-huh. What's that? 
Oh, it will all stay in the family. <laughs> morning, Silas. Good morning. All the bags are in the cats, except Miss Audrey's. Good. I think you got enough food in here to feed an army. Miss Bach is all before she went to Sacramento. <laughs> Never make a statement like that to me, boy, and walk away. Twenty dollars against that scratched up rival. Here. Twenty dollars? Well, now, you can't back up your challenge. It's very much of a bet now, can Say, you? Say, Nick, Quit. would you see what's keeping order? We're going to miss the train. Yeah, and you tell your brother about my target shooting, will you? I don't know what he said, but take the bet. Forty dollars! Oh, howdy. I think he's rattled. That's half the winning. <laughs> Oh, Silas, did you put Miss Audra's pickled cucumbers in there? Right in here. I sure hope she wins ribbon this year. Silas, why do you think Mrs. Barkley went up to the fair in advance? To be on the planning commission? She went up there to buy off those cucumber judges. Oh, Mr. Barkley. Last train to the fair, leaving in a half hour. Come in. Come on, come on, come on. You're holding everybody up. Could you get my bags for me, All please? All right. It happens every time I rush. What happens every time you rush? I don't turn out right. Well, you turn out right enough to get your proper share of looks from the boys. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not in the least bit concerned about the boys. <laughs> oh, Nick, I forgot my bag. I'll be right down. All right, hurry up. Cut off my arm. Oh, excuse that. Roger. You're holding up the parade. It's not the depot. I know. He's in the hotel. Yes? Uh, the bellboy, Dr. Travers. What is it? A uh, message for you, sir. Well? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. There just wasn't a seat left on the morning stage. Well, I explained at the desk how important it was for me to get I, passage. I, 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 was to... I checked myself, sir. There just wasn't a seat left. Uh, not even up with the driver. What about a train? Oh, uh, there's a train uh, going to Sacramento in a little while, but, but nothing else till tomorrow. How little is a little while? You said you were going to Modesto? I've changed my mind. Well, train leaves at 3 o'clock. That's in about 15 minutes. OK, son, thanks. Oh, <laughs> sure thing. Uh, hey, uh, you want me to carry a case for you? No, thanks. I can handle it. Oh, OK. Oh, uh, if you're going to Sacramento, uh, you might looking at the fair. Well, uh, thanks, son. I just might uh, do that. Goodbye. Georgia should be a state fair every day in the year. <laughs> Your liver wouldn't stand it. If my liver can survive all that red eye, I guess I can stand this imported juice to drink today, huh, Jared? Charlie, nothing will ever slow you down. <laughs> Ten dollars says my Brahma takes yours in the judging, Jared. Now, Abe, I thought you learned your lesson last year. Is it a bet? All right, it's a bet. Good. Let's make it 20. I feel lucky. Done. <laughs> 
Oh, excuse me. I'm looking for the smoking lounge. Oh, well, this is the last car. It's up the other way. I'm sorry. Excuse this is sir. a private party. Quite all right. Oh, hello. How have you been? Hello. Charlie, Charlie Wellman. Uh, Dr. Travers, Mr. Wellman. Uh, have we met before? Well, I, I thought we had. I, I guess I made a mistake. Excuse me, Doctor. And excuse me. I'm Jared Barkley, Doctor. If you think you can stand the bedlam in here, you're more than welcome to stay and have your smoke. I wouldn't think of intruding. The vestibule will do just as well. Pardon me, all. Quite all right. Cinnamon in my pickled cucumbers. So that's how you win the blue ribbon every year. Well, I didn't put any up this year. What with the needlepoint I'm entering, I just didn't have the time. For me. Oh, the last two drumsticks. But for a lovely lady. Jared, guess what? Grace isn't entering her pickled cucumbers this year. Oh, now that's too bad. Oh, no, it isn't. That's good. Now maybe you'll have a chance with mine. Hey, what is it? Just a stitch. Now, what do you mean, just a stitch? Well, it's nothing. It's gone. Give me that food. I'm starving. Come on, you two. For heaven's sake, stop frowning. Hey, hey, honey, what is it, Audra? It's my stomach. There was a doctor just in here. I'll get him. What did you do now? Eat some of your pickles? Just get more sense than that. My pickles are fine. And as I recall, you both had some yourselves. Oh, I feel sick. Yeah, I'm sick. The doctor will be here in a minute. Everything's going to be all right. Excuse me, Charlie. Excuse me, please. Now, would you mind? Oh, oh yes, Doctor. Thank you. Honey, this is Dr. Travers. How do you do, ma'am? Well, what seems to be the trouble? It's my stomach. Here. Has it been bothering you long? It started this morning, just before we left the house. Did you eat something you shouldn't have? Nothing the rest of the family haven't had. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll get my bag. You might put her on the sofa over there. Huh? All right, Doctor. Come on, honey, let's move over there. Now, doctor, I'm uh, Nick Barkley. Uh, could you tell me how she is? I won't know until I examine her, Mr. Barkley. Oh. Well, I wonder if you could get everybody except the family to please clear the car. Oh, yes, fine. Thank you, Doctor. party waiting for you up the line.
Just relax, Miss Barkley. Hey. Now you just rest easy, huh? Everything's gonna be all right, honey. Jared, it's really beginning to hurt. We're doing everything that we can. And that's more than enough. Now, open your mouth. What's that? Laudanum. It'll help deaden the pain. Painless? She has a badly inflamed appendix. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, what are you going to do? There's no cause for immediate concern. Do you suppose there's any ice on this train? There was some produce loaded in Stockton. It'd be packed in ice, wouldn't it? I could use some. Five or ten pounds. I'll get it. Is there anything else we can do? Just help me get her as comfortable as possible. Well, Heath? The doctor says it's her appendix. I've got to get some ice. Appendix? Swelling down. You're going to be fine, just fine. Doctor? Any pain? Not now. You see? I'll try to get some rest. Doctor? Thank you for being here. Is that all there is to it? For now. The ice will control the swelling until we get to the next stop. You've got to take her off, get her to a hospital. The next stop is River Station. There isn't any hospital there. It's just a small mail pickup. There's not another hospital between here and Sacramento. Hmm. Four and a half hours. We could cut that down if we passed up some of the stops. Any time you say it would be a help. Suppose I talk to the conductor. If I tried, and not too hard, I could fly right now. Oh. Well, that's the medicine the doctor gave you. No, it isn't. You always said I was as flighty as a bird. They're my bird wings. <laughs> you know, you're probably right. Anything I can get for you? Mm -hmm. You just name it. Would you make sure my pickled cucumbers get into the judging at the fair? You can count on it. Even if my pickled cucumbers haven't got any cinnamon in them, they're pretty good, aren't they? Well, I... <laughs> you bet they are. Yeah? I wonder what Mother will say when she meets a train in Sacramento.
They're going to pick up as much time as they can. What about the stop at River Station? Well, there's two passengers getting off, and there's a mail pickup. But they're going to cut short. The conductor figures we'll make it to Sacramento in three hours. What about it, Doc? Can she hang on that long? I don't know. I certainly wouldn't like to operate on this train. Operate? Do you think it'll come to that? Mr. Barkley could very easily come to that. business. But what happened on that platform just a while ago? You're right. What happened on that platform is none of your business. You see, everybody transgresses in life, Mr. Barkley. Some are less fortunate than others. Has a way of catching up with them. I suppose it isn't necessary to tell you how grateful we are for your help. No, it isn't. But then words are only words, aren't they? If there's anything that my brothers and I can do, there's nothing you. you can do. These transgressions you spoke of, I'm a lawyer. If this was a legal matter, that man you saw on the platform would be a law officer. And if he were a law officer, he wouldn't hesitate to come in here and get me. Then who is he, Doctor? Who is he? I don't know his name. But like some others, He's a man that wants to see me dead. Sacramento. She looked to be waiting for us. It's all right. I'm running. I'm running as far and as fast as I can. I'm sorry about your sister, but don't try to stop me. Doctor, listen to me. I don't know what this is all about, but you can't leave now. Mr. Buckley, stay out of this, huh? Doctor, whatever it is, my brothers and I will help you, but please, don't leave now. Just the three of you? I don't think there's much that you can do. Please, take it easy. Where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? What happened? She just sat up and started screaming. She's in pain. Please take it easy. Where the devil is that doctor? We'll be here in a minute. Take it easy now. It's just 
what she doesn't need. Well, she's in pain, Doctor. Miss Parker, listen to me. Oh, Doctor, please help me. Listen to me. No more laudanum. The only way that we can keep a check on the progress of the inflammation is by the severity and the repetition of pain. Now, if I sedate you and your appendix would burst, I wouldn't know it. Appendix? Boy, you must have known that. You must have sensed it. Of course you did. that running would have helped in the long run. I'll stay with the train until it gets to Sacramento. Until they come and pull me off. Mel and Ford will bring him here. Right here. It's been a long wait. Aaron, the boy shouldn't be at the hanging. Don't start that. Do it for her. Cut it out. Send him back. No. Send him back to the ranch, Aaron. Think you should go back to the ranch? Come on. Andy. Go on, tell him. No need for you to be here, Andy. What? Going back to the ranch, son. Not likely. You never saw him before in your life. Just same, I know him better than you do. Aaron, you did real fine. If you haven't got any stomach for it, Deke, why don't, uh, why don't you go back to the ranch? You know, I ramrodded for your pa long before you was born. I cuffed you once or twice while you growed. Yeah. Well, after today, there's nobody going to cuff me. This telegram just came from Ford. They failed. Kelleher is still on the train. Men, you ride on to the watering stop. Wait. My boy and I won't fail. We'll board the train and we'll take him off there. All right, mount up. say why. Miss <laughs> Barkley, there's nothing I can do to ease your pain. What is it, Mr. Barkley? Did you expect some saccharine story to cheer up? Well, the occasion doesn't call for it. It calls for honesty. Fine, that's just fine. And perhaps you can tell us what sort of trouble you're in. Oh, she 
you think you have enough trouble of your own. Yeah, but it seems to be all wrapped up with yours. Well? Well, let's just say, for some, blood for blood is the only just punishment. Any time now. You sure stood up to Deke like the son I raised. <laughs> you know, sometimes I can't figure Deke. I mean, it was my mother that was killed. I told him you'd feel like that. Wouldn't want somebody else to do your job for you. I told him. <laughs> Drink, son. Go ahead. You're alongside of me today. You're man enough. Pity you didn't get to really know your mother. Well, you've made it so I know her. It's like I know the man that killed her. With the, the touch of her, the way she walked. Finest woman that ever set foot on the earth. She'll rest easy soon. Yes, she will, Paul. say about frowning, don't you? No, what do they say? It gives you wrinkles. Don't you worry. It looks nice on you. Oh, you think so, do you? Sort of distinguished looking. I think it's a good idea for lawyers to be distinguished looking. Don't you? Well, I, I think it's an even better idea for him to win a case once in a while. <laughs> hang on, honey, hang on tight. <laughs> I'm really a case, aren't I? Pretty one. Hey, remember three years ago when you took me to San Francisco to see that play? I sure do. After it was over, I said I wanted to be an actress. You know, I think you would have made a pretty good one. Jared? What? Really, I'm going to be all right. Of course you are. Don't worry.
I don't mean no harm to you people. Easy, Mr. Barkley. Barkley? You Tom Barkley's son? That's right. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Barkley, this is the man I'm looking for. Oh, now, wait a minute. Stand back! None of your concern. Believe me, it's our concern. Take a look at him, son. Take a long, hard look. That's the one. That's the one that we've been waiting all these years to hang. You don't even remember me, do you? No. You hear that, Andy? My name is Moyers. Aaron Moyers. That was a long time ago. It was yesterday. It's been yesterday for 15 years. Why are you after Dr. Travers? Doctor? Travers? Why didn't you try killing her? That's Lucian Keller. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Lucian Kelleher. The outlaw who sacked Colbyville. Burned it to the ground. The man who destroyed the work of a dozen lifetimes. The man who killed my wife and five others. He's also the man that was sent to prison for 13 years. We well, should have been hanged. The law said he should go to prison for 13 years, and he did. He bought the law! Look, whatever happened, happened. The man served a sentence. Right now, he's very useful. He's a doctor. He can't be a doctor. You're not fool enough to believe that, are you? Doctor. Doctor! Stay away from her, Kelleher. She needs help. I said stay away from her! All right, that's it. Is it? I got men waiting at the watering stop to take him off the train. Well, they won't if we don't stop. Get away with this, Kelleher. I mean to see you hacked. Stand back.
you that. It's Lucian Kelleher. You can't let him escape. Easy now. Easy. Take it easy now. Here's some more. Your father himself would have been the first to help string him up. Our sister needs him. He's an animal. He's got to be killed. Why don't you just ask? Why don't you ask if he's got some kind of papers to prove he's a doctor? He's a fake. He is going to kill that girl, same as he did the other. Stand back and don't you move. Don't you dare move. Easy, easy, quiet. <laughs> Mr. Barclay? What is it? I can't wait any longer. I'm going to have to operate. You're not going to let him put a knife to your sister. I spent 13 years in prison for what I did. Ten of them working in the prison hospital. During that time, Lucy and Kelleher ceased to be. When I was released, I continued my practice in small cow towns and gold camps. I was the only doctor the people in those places knew. I mended their broken bones, sewed their torn flesh, delivered their babies, helped bury the dead. Now maybe, maybe I didn't pay for Colbyville yet, but one thing, I'm gonna save this girl's life. First thing you can do is stop this train. I can't operate while it's moving. Now you know if we stop, those men may catch up. And if we don't, her appendix may burst. All right, Doctor. I'll uncouple this car. We'll send the train on ahead for help. Now, help me move her in the rear compartment. I'll operate in there. Right, Doctor. You two boys get over there. The minute this car stops, my men will swarm all over you. And you won't be alive to see the first one board. That's a promise. Now move out. As soon as they get within calling distance, you better tell them to stop. I don't have to see Kelleher dead. Just knowing that he's going to be is enough. There'll be a bloodbath that none of you will ever forget. Moyers, you give me 30 minutes and I'll go with you. Now, wait a minute. I haven't got time to argue. What about it? Stay with me. Hold up there! You men wait till I call you! Well, now, mister, you better just pray they do what you say. Because if they come any closer, you're a dead man. Don't you worry. When Kelleher finishes butchering your sister, you'll help us hang him. After we 
finished, we got to get her to a hospital as quickly as possible before infection sets in. These aren't the most sanitary of conditions. That train should be back before too long. Good. Okay. Wash your hands in this whiskey. Now, hold on to this laudanum. She may need some more. All right. Make sure that she gets plenty of rest, huh? She all right? Yeah. In a few weeks, she'll forget it ever happened. All right, Kelleher. Let's go. He's not going with you. He gave me his word. We didn't. My men. Moyers, I'll have every lawman in this state after them. I promise you. Well, I won't kill her. Well, mister, you're not going to get him. Yes, I will. Hold it! Andy! Can't kill her! Now, this is for my mother. I waited all my life for this. You stay back. You said <laughs> he didn't kill my mother. He's killer. You, you heard him. You saw him, the same as me. Lucian Kelleher is dead. <laughs> All my life I've waited. He's dead. All my life.
We're finished here. train's coming back for us, honey. Won't be very long till you're nice and comfortable in a hospital. Is that terrible? Screaming and carrying on. Screaming and carrying on? Doctor, in all your travels, you ever treated a patient better than our sister here? Your sister gets first prize. Speaking of prizes, would you remember to enter those pickled cucumbers into the fair? You may not win our shooting match, but you just might place with those cucumbers. Wait a minute, now those cucumbers aren't mine, they're... Ha, 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 ha,